दम खोपन भिखव दुखम मरीज सचम जाति पि दुखा जरा पि दुखा व्याधि पि दुखा मरणम पि दुखम अपिये ही संपयोगो दुखो पिये ही विपयोगो दुखो यम पिच्छम नौलभति तम पि दुखम संखिते पंचुपादान खंधा दुखा इदम खोपन भिखवे हैप्पी विशाख डे एट द इस रीजनल चौक जे और ऑफ नॉर्थ अमेरिका आईएनसी चौक जे और ऑफ कोरियन बुरिसम द 28 इंटरनेशनल लेरस लेंथन परेड फॉर द सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ गुडास बर्थडे Happy Mother's Day to the most respected venerable monks and nuns. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is very beautiful and meaningful day. It is very beautiful day because we from different backgrounds are celebrating Vesak Day here in the names of Buddhists. It is the day Buddha was born. It is the day Buddha enlightened. It is the day Buddha went to Nibbana. Buddha lived his life for 80 years. He went through family life for 29 years in the royal palace without seeing the world outside. He searched for the truth for free. All suffering for six years, he walked and taught people for freeing social caste system, and freeing and suffering for forty-five years. His life about being born, searching for the truth, freeing suffering himself and others. Most respected venerable monks, nuns, ladies, and gentlemen. I believe that we all of us try to live our lives as the way Buddha did and instructed. As we can see, the world now is very hard, and maybe horror and horror. It is hard because of weather. It is hard because of human be behaviors. It is hard because of violence, such as domestic violence. It is hard because of politics and economics. You can name whatever you see reasonably. That is why climate change becomes reality scientifically in the world. So, what can we learn from Vesak Day today to reduce and stop eating? Truthfully, to do anything is to start from our minds. Naturally, the heat and hotness are dominant in our minds and our hearts. The heat in our mind is much more than where the heat is. In this case, we have to back up and learn from ourselves individually, because no one else can know ourselves better than we do. By thinking and questioning ourselves again and again, we can find the answers. How much do we love ourselves and hate others at the same time a day? Why do we love ourselves and hate others? Why do not we love ourselves and others? Are the loves and haters our good friends or enemies? What is the result of love and hatred? Is it suffering or happiness? 
when cannot we accept differences because the differences are the colorful truths in the society why do we love only our personalities and cultures but hate others can we really deny the differences cultures and personals of others this is called pavana in pali in english it is called meditation if we can do that in everyday life some occasions or sometimes we can we will be able to find and drop the heat in our minds practically we can drop the heat from our minds we can also drop the heat from our mouth and our bodies eventually because our minds are the foreigners then we can change the ways of our living we can change angry hateful violent lives to peaceful lives we can change stressful and wandering lives to calm lives we can change unhappy lives to happy lives when this internal heat hardness anger hatred and violence drop from our lives the weather and environment outside become the way they are and drop down automatically when individuals can change and as described above the whole society will follow this is the words of buddha mano popang kamia thamia mano sattha mano majia mana sache patothena pia sate via karao te via ta ta nang tuk kaman we te cha kang we we ha ta patyan my is the forerunner of all ever states my is chief my mate are they if one speaks or acts with weak mind because of that suffering follows one even as the wheel follows the hoof of the trot ox mano popang kami thami mano setha mano miji mana sa che pasan ne ne phia sati vie karao te vie ta ta nang sukk man ve te chaya we anupayini my is the forerunner of all states my is chief my mate are they if one speaks or acts with sure mind because of that happiness follows one even as one zero that never lives i believe that because of all these reasons and buddha's teachings the is regional chokje order of north america inc chokje order of korean buddhism always plan celebrating Vesak Day here every year by printing and uniting all Buddhist backgrounds and others. I am very happy and appreciate for this great wisdom and beautifully, meaningfully, culturally and your celebration. May this Buddha words reflect our lives more effectively continuously. May the heat, anger, hatred, and violence drop down from our hearts, our minds, our mouths, and our bodies day by day. May the world become more colorful, peaceful, beautiful, harmonious, and prosperous in every moment. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, Mr. Chang-Neh President of the Korean Buddhist Association of Greater New York, relays to us his congratulatory message. Hello everyone. I was worried about this morning for the rain so hard. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out to celebrate the Buddha's birthday today. 
the Buddha insisted on not being called a deity by his followers. But his teaching inspired so many and was so far teaching that some mistakenly considered him as a god. But however, Buddha was a man who denied the worship of others unto him because he saw himself as one with his followers. We celebrate his birthday as the pinnacle of the Buddhist celebration not only as a remembrance of him, but everything he taught, everything he loved, everything he gave, and he was. Buddha discovered that the whole universe is interconnected. Without one, the entirety of the universe collapses. And he aimed to teach these followers of this discovery. He taught that superiority is but a state of mind, which is as fragile as real or itself. And that with willpower and belief, one could make anything possible. Also, he taught that there is a reason for everything that happens in this universe. And at the instance of a singular event, or being that is out of place, the universe will fall into disorder. Buddha learned of the human conditions, birth, sickness, and old age, and death. He made it his life's mission to teach everyone he could all he could. And the first of the four novel truths in Buddhism is the idea of suffering. The Buddhist path is focused around coming to terms with painful aspect of life and ultimately accepting them rather than suffering through them. Buddha was a human being who found his perfection through Nirvana, with which he became perfectly moral perfectly ethical and thus was able to end his suffering and henceforth spread this knowledge about. The celebration of Buddha's birthday is an appreciation for his contribution to the advancement of humanity. Since the spread of his influence dating back as far as the 6th century BC. We have come to celebrate what represent all principles of Buddhism for the betterment and finding of oneself. Unfortunately, there are no holiday discounts that come with Buddha's birthday. But once again, thank you all for coming out today. Thank you. Up next, Professor Hyun Kyung Chung, Professor of Interfaith Engagement, Union Theological Seminary, is here to give us her congratulatory message. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Happy Buddha's birthday and happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. My name is Jung Hyun Jung. I'm a professor of interface engagement at Union Theological Seminary. I'm a kind of a religious new species who uh, are called double belonger. I am a Buddhist Christian. This is New York City and many of you know Buju, Buddhist Jew, also Hindu Buddhist. There are many people who are learning from uh, our neighbor's religion. 
the some of my naughty students ask me, Professor Chan, are you married to Jesus and dating with the Buddha? So I say, no, it's not like that. This is a very beautiful, open friendship between different religions. As a Christian, I learned so much from Buddha. The most important learning I learned from Buddha is there is a way out of suffering and you can do it with your own power and your will. And you can really make your life happy and beautiful. Not only your life, you make this earth, this society happy and beautiful. Also, I learned from Buddhism that there's a radical non-duality. It's not I and them. We are all interconnected. We are all together here. And also radical impermanence. Everything is changing in this world. Then I learned this radical transcendence of our categories and names and forms like a conceptual prison we carry with us. So today I worry about this country and worry about the earth. You know this presidential election, there are so much hate speech and polarizing speech about immigrants, Muslims, Mexicans, people of color, and 99% of people. But 99% of people and 1% of people, we are not separate. We are together. Yes, black lives matter, and black and white, people of color, and people of white color, we are all together in this world. And we do not make enemies in the name of religion. Muslim, Christian, Jews, we do not make enemies. Buddha said there's no enemy. So today, I want to celebrate this uh, radical non-duality and our radical interconnectedness in this world. I want to close my congratulatory speech for thanking all these bhigu and bhigunis who make this Buddha Dharma expand in this world, transform our inner world and transform, in, transform this society. So I will end my greeting with my teacher, Zen Master Sung San's teaching. He always said to us, practice very hard. Let us practice very hard. Let us get enlightened and let us save all beings from suffering. I hope we all practice hard and make ourselves uh, liberate from suffering, make ourselves happy, make this society, this earth happy. Thank you, happy Buddha's birthday.